That's right, it's Serge Bogosian, the hockey guru. And I'm here, and I'm happy. It's a beautiful morning, May the 2nd, Wednesday. Some people call Wednesday the hump day. That's right, because it's the hump of the week, and, uh, and there you have it. What amazing playoffs we're having this year. The, um, the, the second round has just been phenomenal. The two games last night were back and forth, and um, lots of goals, lots of excitement, a little bit of controversy we're going to get into. But um, the first round, we didn't have as, as close series on, on some of them. We only had one game seven, but all these series in the second round have been just phenomenal. We, we could see any one of these teams winning. Let's start off with the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Washington Capitals. So the Washington Capitals go into the series with a chip on their shoulder. Um, they can't beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs, and um, this is, is this the year they're going to do it? Anyway, so yesterday, another great game, back and forth. Um, it looked like Ovechkin is here. He has a mission. He has a mission to win this series single-handedly. The Pittsburgh Penguins got some really good news before the game. They got uh, Gino Evgeny Malkin back, who had missed the previous three games, and um, it looked like he was... He was a factor, but he didn't make a huge difference. So, four four goals for the Capitals, started by Carlson, Stevenson. Stevenson was having a pretty good series, a uh, pretty good playoff. Niskanen, and the beautiful game winner. So, the game is back and forth. The game, the Pittsburgh Penguins go up, the Capitals tie it. Penguins uh, go up again, and the Capitals tie it. So, what happens? About a, about a minute left in the game, we get a two-on-one. Backstrom and Ovechkin and uh, a beautiful pass by by Nicholas Backstrom to Ovi and Ovi puts it away for the for the win and you could see it you could see how excited he was after that goal you can see him jump in you can the, the crowd you can hear a pin drop in Pittsburgh it's a huge win for the for the Capitals two games to one Capitals are up and uh, they got a lead in the series but again this series is not over by a long shot this series is going to go long now Everyone's talking about the hit. So Tom Wilson, um, who has some, uh, is a bit of a dirty player. He had some history with the NHL. He's been suspended before. He's even had a dirty hit in this series already. Had a very questionable hit on um, Aston Reese. So Wilson goes in, and uh, it looks on the play, it looks like a shoulder to shoulder, but his shoulder gets Aston Reese in the jaw. Aston Reese has a broken jaw and a concussion now. Tom Wilson is 6'4". Aston Reese is 6 feet. It's a tough call, all right? So if you take everything into consideration, if you take everything like the, his history, and if you take the fact that the player got injured, pretty seriously injured, broken jaw concussion, he's probably going to be out for a while. Looks like uh, there's a hearing this morning uh, for Tom Wilson. I think he's going to get three games on this. It didn't look like he was attempting to injure um, did he leave his feet to hit him? You can look at the replay. I looked at the replay like 10 times. It's very hard to say. His feet come off the ice after the hit. Is he is he head hunting here? Tough to say. His shoulder starts off with the shoulder, but then it creeps up to the head. So he definitely there's head contact. I think there's going to be a suspension. I wouldn't be surprised if it's three games because of the uh, contributing factors. The contributing factors being his history. His history of being suspended already by the NHL. His history of being a bit of a dirty player. Uh, the Pittsburgh Penguin fans want his head on a plate. Um, hope, we hope that Aston Reese is uh, going to be okay. However, you know it's not pretty. Like the it was a great game, and you don't want stuff like this to to darken the game, to give the game a black eye because it was a beautiful game last night. These two teams don't like each other, um, and you see it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle to the end. So there you have it. The Pittsburgh Penguins lose to the Washington Capitals 4-3. to three, And the Capitals lead 2-1. to one. Now, a little bit, one other thing I want to touch on in this series. Matt Murray has not looked um, that great yesterday. He could have had a couple of the goals. The goal by Niskanen and the winning goal. He was a bit out of position. Maybe he could have had it. Uh, Matt Murray is not the goalie that uh, is going to lead this team to the Stanley Cup again. Now, the goalie that they did give up, the goalie that did not protect is the number one goalie in the playoffs and that is Marc-Andre Fleury for the Las Vegas Golden Knights who is 10 games away from a Stanley Cup himself. So there you go. We'll talk about goaltending a bit later 
but um, I'm not I'm not impressed with Matt Murray. Matt Murray, you're not doing the job. Winnipeg and Nashville. Now, what can you say about this game? Wow, I actually missed the first period, and um, I turn on my phone and I and, uh, I take a look, and um, after the first period, Nashville three, Winnipeg nothing. What's going to happen there? You figure, okay, it's over. Nashville's going to take control of this game. Nashville's is coming off a big overtime win. They're going to they're going to cruise and they're going to win the series. No way. That's not what this is the playoffs. This is the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets they're convincing me. I I was not a big Jets fan and I was not a big Jets supporter going into this, but I can see the Jets going all the way. They just got too many too many weapons um, from up front. Their defense is just amazing and they got a great goaltender. So what happens? 3 nothing. It didn't look like um, I was watching a lot of the replays. I listened to Don Cherry, and he agreed that the Winnipeg Jets didn't, were not ready to play this game. But whatever happened in the first intermission, boy, did they ever get ready. Now, a lot of coaches after a 3 nothing start like that, they will pull their goalie. Uh, they didn't pull the goalie. Um, they felt that Hullabuck is still the guy to stay in there, and did it ever work? Four unanswered goals. Um, Stastny, Buff with two, Truba. Um, and they go up four to three. Now the Nashville Predators in the third period they don't give up, and um, they tie the game. Philip Forsberg, who's having a phenomenal playoff as well, and uh, they tie the game. However, the Jets just pull away with a big goal to go up five four, and then a couple of empty netters to make the final seven to four. Um, the shots were forty five to thirty in favor of Winnipeg. And um, Pekka Rene is not, did not have a great game. Pekka Rene's stats are not that great. Pekka Rene's goals against average is 3.07. Compare that to guys like uh, Flurry 1.23, Holtby, 2.08, Jones, 2.30. Pekka Rene has to, has to be better. Pekka Rene, without Pekka Rene, the National Predator is not going to win the Stanley Cup. So Pekka Rene has to get better. The goals for Winnipeg were Stastny, like I said, Bufflin with two, Truba, uh, Tanev, Wheeler, Tanev and Wheeler with the empty net goals. So it was 5-4, very close, and then they scored two empty net goals. I just want to talk a little bit about one of my favorite players in the NHL, and that's Dustin Bufflin. Dustin Bufflin, by the way, the toughest uh, spelling. If you don't know hockey, if you don't know the Winnipeg Jets, and if you don't know Dustin Bufflin, you're not going to be able to spell his name correctly because his name is spelled B-Y-F-U-G-L-I-E-N. How do we get Bufflin out of that? Well, we do, because he is. He's Dust. Dusty the Buffy. Anyways, this guy is, is, is a very unique player. He's 6'5", 260 pounds, massive. He's just a, got an amazing shot. He can skate. He can hit. He's um, intimidating, and he's having a great playoff. Um, he scored three goals and seven assists already um, in the playoffs, and he's the number one uh, leading defenseman in scoring. So... Guys like Dustin Bufflin are hard to come by. Uh, 6'5", 260 um, NHL defenseman don't grow on trees. So this guy is a huge asset. I think he's the maybe the MVP right now. Uh, obviously, you can make cases for, uh, for Fleury, um, for maybe William Carlson in Vegas. But if the, if the uh, Winnipeg Jets go all the way, currently right now, I see Dustin Bufflin as a big factor. So very, um, very impressed with his play. Very impressed with um, the Winnipeg Jets. The Winnipeg Jets go up after a big two to one win. Uh, if you guys hadn't noticed, they the Winnipeg, you know the Budweiser. The Budweiser has this thing where they have this goal light. So every time you hook it up to your TV, and uh, every time the, your team scores, the Budweiser light goes up and makes sound. They had I don't know how big. I want to say 10, 15, 20 foot actual Budweiser light outside the arena every time they scored. They got a lot of lot of play out of that. Seven goals. Um, the Jets fans, like we've we've said before, are, are just amazing. So, you know what? Not a huge Jets fan, but I like to see them win too. If they won the Stanley Cup, it would not uh, upset me. Uh, just a little wrap up on who's leading the scoring for so far in these playoffs. The, the top three scorers uh, are Gensel, who has 19 points already. Pasternak, 18 points, and uh, Sidney Crosby with 17 points. In the top three goalies, Mark Andre Fleury with a f just the ridiculous 1.23 uh, goals against average and a ridiculous 960 save percentage. Braden Holtby, 208, and Marty Jones, 2.30.
we've talked about you're not going to win a Stanley Cup without a top goalie. And if Vegas is to win a Stanley Cup, they've got that check, check mark. The guy is just on fire. So there you have it. There's the wrap up. Um, I want to touch a little bit about a sport that we don't talk about. And the reason I don't talk about it is because of um, I don't like it for a variety of reasons. So the Toronto Raptors, who basically dominated the regular season, not dominated, but they were the number one number one seed in the East, face off in the second round against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, we all know Cleveland is going to play Golden State in the finals, right? It's just the way it is. Uh, one guy just dominates, and uh, LeBron James went in to Toronto yesterday, and they won. They won in overtime. We're going to touch about, we're going to talk a little bit about basketball. I don't know too much about it. You can tell me about basketball if you guys want to talk about it. But uh, Golden State also won. Cleveland also won. And seven years in a row, LeBron, LeBron James has been in the NBA Finals and with three different teams. He's looking to make it eight. Do you think it's going to, it's going to happen? Obviously, it's going to happen. In the NHL, things like that don't happen. You know, this is a team game. Um, usually, the President's Trophy doesn't even go to the Stanley Cup Final. They don't usually win the Stanley Cup. So, it's up in the air. Eight teams left. Anyone can win. I don't see that in the NBA. Anyways, my rant for the day. Basketball rant. Hockey's better. No offense to the basketball fans. It's a great sport for you, not for me. Um, but there you go. Wednesday, May 2nd, the vlog the vlog is going to grow. The vlog is going to get bigger. We're, we're looking at a few things, different locations. Uh, the vlog is going to be going to Canada, actually. Uh, and uh, we're going to be traveling in about a month. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be giving you some great locations in Canada. Maybe we'll be in the Hockey Hall of Fame. There'll be some interesting things. There you go. Watch my colleague Redmond's wrap up. He's got some great stuff today. Down below, subscribe, like, comment. We love you guys. Have a great Wednesday. Serge. Signing off. We'll see you tomorrow.